Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Just Praise Him. <laughs> I hope you're being thoroughly blessed by these messages. Uh, I want to say hello to my friend Tracy. I'm so glad that you're doing better. I mean, so, so, so glad. Okay. Uh, his wife, Candy. Uh, I want to say hello to Amanda and Chad and Janice and Jason, Laura, Mel, uh, Mari, Steve. Um, See. I want to say hello to Lupe, Mercy, Virginia, um, Jaquitin, uh, Zan, Phil, and Mike. Uh, I want to. I just. I just want to say hello to everybody. I'm just hi. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad you can join us today. Uh, today's word is based on Romans chapter eight, verse one. It's a very important word. So. Listen very intently, okay? Uh, remember, you can email us at justpraisem1 at gmail.com. That's justpraisem1, that's the number one, at gmail.com. Uh, you can also mail us at justpraisem, P.O. Box 305, Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, 15666. That's justpraisem, P.O. Box 305, Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, PA 15666. Okay. Now let's get right into the word, but first let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you that it is it pierces our hearts and makes us new, Lord. I pray for the hearer. I pray that they be blessed with all sorts of blessings, Lord. All the riches in heaven be theirs in Christ Jesus' name. I pray that they, the hearer, hear the word and that they are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, and I hope you enjoy today's word. Romans 8, 1 in the New King James Version says, There is therefore no, no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The New International Version, the NIV Version, says, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It stops right there. This is why it's important to read multiple versions of the Bible. See, <clears throat> the uh, King James and the New King James, are in, and, and actually a couple others, but the King James and the New King James have added the who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit parts. Okay, It's, it's not in the original language. So we, we had to assume that the original translator thought it was important, but it, it just it just changes the verse. Okay, so it wasn't supposed to be in there originally. So since the original writers did not include it, well, we should not either. <laughs> uh, here are a few different translations of the same verse okay so the, he, here's a few different translations the amplified reads as follows therefore there's no no condemnation no guilty verdict no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior man I, I just I just love the Amplified Bible, um, the way it defines things. It's written more as a legal document. It, it, it breaks the words down so it's so it's easier explained. I mean, I just love 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 the Amplified version. Now, the Passion translation says. So now the case is closed. 
there remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the Anointed One. The Message Bible reads as follows. With the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, that faithful dilemma is resolved. Those who enter into Christ's being here for us no longer have to live under a continuous, low-lying, black cloud. <laughs> Man, I, I, I just love the message, too. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's so poetic. It's like, it's like reading the Bible in, in a more natural setting, you know, uh, just so good. So anyway, I'm sorry. Here's the New Life Translation, okay? Now because of this, those who belong to Christ will not suffer the punishment of sin. The contemporary English version says, if you belong to Christ Jesus, you won't be punished. Now, you see that by reading these different versions, you get a, a more balanced view of the scripture. Okay, you're able to, to, to pick it apart and, and look at it deeper. So what is this verse saying to us? Well, it's simple really. It's saying that we no longer should feel condemnation or guilt. We don't have to carry that weight with us anymore. You know, it's, it's funny that the first thing that we do when we do something wrong is feel the guilt. And sometimes it lasts a long, long, long time. You know, when, 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 what, what we should do is repent and move on. Uh, it's best explained in the story of the woman caught in adultery. Uh, it's found in, in chapter 8 of John. In it, we will see how Jesus reacts to sin in someone else's life. Now, it's very important that we do this, okay? So John chapter 8, in the Passion, and, 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 and I'm using the Passion to, to mix it up a little bit, okay? But anyway, John chapter 8 in the Passion reads this way. John walked up the Mount of Olives near the city where he spent the night. Then at dawn, Jesus appeared in the temple courts again. And soon all the people gathered around to listen to his words. So he sat down and taught them. Then in the middle of this teaching, the religious scholars and the Pharisees broke through the crowd and brought a woman who had been caught in the act of committing adultery and made her stand in the middle of everyone. Now, I, just, I want you to pause right here. Okay, just want you to pause. Now, first of all, I would like to ask, where's the dude? <laughs> where's this other person at? I mean, if they caught her in the very act of adultery, there must have been someone else who was doing it. Like, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, so where's the guy? Where's the other person caught in the act? I mean, it stands to reason. If, if, if there were two people caught in the act, that there would be two people brought forth. But only the woman is brought forth. Hmm. That makes me wonder. Makes me just think a little bit. What if, what if, what if the guy is a, a, a friend and, and they don't want to embarrass him? You know? funny how one person is wrong and another person is okay. Just, just saying it. 
That's all. That's all. <laughs> the other question I have is, what are they doing? What were they doing? I mean, you had to be looking out for this. This, is, this just doesn't happen. You have to be actively looking for something wrong. Well, why would you do that? Why are we so judgmental? It's like that verse in the Bible in Matthew 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 3. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but did not consider the plank in your own eye? Actually, the, tr the translators are being kind here. It actually says, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but you do not consider the tree in your own eye? Tree in your own eye. I mean, that, that's, wow. <laughs> we have to be careful that we don't judge others. We don't know what, what, what other person has been through. We're not called to be fruit inspectors trying to, to find fault in other people. We spend our time finding wrong instead of, well, instead of finding right. If we would do this, this little thing, if we would just do this little thing, what a better place this world would be. Imagine, imagine if people spent their day catching people doing good and nice things for a change. Imagine if, if the news reports on, on TV told us all the good going on in this world. <laughs> there would be so much positivity in this world. But no. No. That, that, that would drive them out of business. I mean... We are so ingrained in hearing the bad stuff people do. We are so determined to hear the wrong that people do. Maybe, maybe it's because we want to feel better about ourselves. I mean, I, 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 I've done this, but at least I didn't do that, you know. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I got off preaching and turned to meddling. <laughs> let, let, let's read on. Okay. They said to Jesus, Teacher, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. Says that Moses' law command us to stone to death a woman like this? Tell us. What to do? Say we should, excuse me, tell us what do you say we should do with her? Then, um, excuse me, they were only testing Jesus because they hoped that to, to trap him with his own words and accuse him of breaking the law of Moses. But Jesus didn't answer them. Instead, he simply bent down and wrote dust with his fingers. Angry, they kept insisting that he answer their question. So Jesus stood up and looked at them and said, let's have the man who has never had a sinful desire throw the first stone at her. Could you imagine that? And then he bent over again and wrote some more words in the dust. Now, I want you to pause. I'm curious to what he wrote on the ground. And the Bible doesn't say, but I'm so curious about it. Uh, a comedian was once talking about it and uh, said that Jesus was writing down the sins of each individual in the group. I don't know. I don't know, maybe. 
I hope so. I mean, I mean, it would have been cool, you know, but I just, I don't know. What was he writing on the ground? Hmm. Well, let's continue reading. Upon hearing that, her accusers slowly left the crowd, one at a time, beginning with the oldest to the youngest, with a convicted conscience, until finally Jesus was left alone with the woman still standing there in front of him. No. So he stood back up, and he said to her, Dear woman, where are your accusers? Is there no one here to condemn you? Looking around, she replied, I see no one, Lord. Jesus said, Then I certainly don't condemn you either. Go. And from now on, be free from a life of sin. Wow. Now, Jesus was the only one that could have convicted her. He was the only sinless person in that whole group. He chose not to. That shows that Jesus isn't worried about a person's sin as much as they are. He was the one person who could have said, You're a sinner. Off with you. <laughs> he could have condemned her in front of all those people. Yes. Yeah. She was a sinner. He had every right to do so. But instead of condemning her, he turned the table on the accusers. Him without sin can judge this woman. Him without sin. All of them. From the oldest to the youngest had some sin in their lives. Each one of them had done something wrong. Every single one of them. That's why we are not to judge. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. It makes no difference. You can't look at someone else's wrongdoing as being greater than your own. It doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't work that way. Jesus told the crowd, if you're without sin, you can cast the first stone. And nobody in that crowd could say they had no sin. Every single one of them was guilty. And it took the guiltless one to point that out to them. So, what does the guiltless what does the guiltless one say to the woman? Now, here she's thinking is over. They're going to stone her. She was caught. She had been trapped. She had nobody to blame but herself. I mean, she did the deed. And now she was ready to pay for it. Pay, pay the piper. <laughs> Jesus said to her, where are those who accuse you? Where are those that brought you here? Where are those 
and stand in judgment of you. And the woman had to take a minute. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Where did they go? Uh, they were here a minute ago. <laughs> they, they, they were here shouting everything I had done wrong. They were ready to judge me. But, um, but nobody's here anymore. Well, praise God. All right, just praise him. God is standing over you right now, telling the accusers in your life the same thing. The same thing Jesus said to the woman. T telling them if they have anything that is wrong, in their own lives, they can't throw anything your way. They can't judge you. Right now, right now, Jesus is saying the same thing to you. He is saying, neither do I condemn you. Neither do I stand in judgment of you. It's like that verse in Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Wow, praise God. We are guiltless because he has taken the guilt away. No longer are we to feel condemned or guilty. We are free. We are forgiven. Jesus threw it once and all, once and for all, in, in the sea of forgetfulness. And the Holy Spirit put up a sign that says, no fishing. <laughs> we are supposed to relive it. We aren't supposed to go over it again and again and again. I know you think that you're being humble or, or, or holy by doing this. But God wants you to forget it. God wants you to move on as it never happened. That, that's what it means to be forgiven from God. That is why Psalm 103, 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, think about that. We don't have to feel the guilt anymore. We have been forgiven. Let's pray together. Okay, say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today knowing that I have sinned. But I believe in your Son, Jesus. I believe he went to the cross, died, from my sins. And you, Lord God, raised him from the dead. I am no longer a sinner, but saved by grace, by your unmerited favor. I am saved. I am righteous. I am redeemed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise God. I hope you enjoyed this service. 